every curve and corner is precisely measured and laid out. Lars Howlett is a master labyrinth designer. So His intricate drawings become these life-size walkable paths. Yeah, I love everything about labyrinths. There's the geometry and the design aspect. There's the history and mythology of labyrinths. They're part of an ancient meditation practice that's been gaining new popularity. For thousands of years, people have walked labyrinths like this one, looking for peace at the center. Lars began walking and building them after the end of a relationship over a decade ago and says they helped him process his emotions. People often find that when they walk the labyrinth, they're able to connect with you know, ideas, insights, you know, they may be able to get answers to a problem. He built these at the Annenberg Beach House as part of a temporary exhibit with Santa Monica Cultural Affairs. This one's made of tape and paper and has a more modern design, but Lars also created these more traditional ones in sand. Many labyrinths follow the same pattern of this one at Chartres Cathedral. It was built in 1200 AD, and they often served as metaphorical pilgrimages for people who couldn't visit holy sites like Jerusalem. Today, they're having a resurgence as a mindfulness practice. Lars is commissioned to build them all over the world and says since the pandemic, he's never been busier. I've had more calls in the last year than I probably had in the previous five years. People really are searching for a way to have a contemplative practice. Hundreds of people visited to walk them this past weekend, including Katie Bull, a labyrinth enthusiast. The labyrinth has been a big part of my life. I don't know how to explain it. If I want to work out a dream or I have a problem, I, I can take it to the labyrinth. Even though these are temporary, Lars hopes this event will create more interest. This map from the website Well-Fed Spirit plots all the public labyrinths in Los Angeles. There's, there's really a, a labyrinth for everybody. Lars says he thinks more people are walking labyrinths because they offer a moment of calm in an often chaotic world. A lot of people come to labyrinths during times of upheaval or transition in their lives. And now with the COVID pandemic, I feel like we're all going through this major transition. And, and the labyrinth is a great place to kind of think about who we were and who we want to be a historic path gaining new ground. All right, Melvin and Giselle. So I've been walking the labyrinth. I'm feeling zen and I made you guys a little flag. It says <laughs> Melvin and Giselle, oh. peace and love. Yes. Oh, so you have, you have love a little it. piece of yourself here. <laughs> You're the best. Okay? And we're, uh, we've got it here. Um, so this one in the sand is a little bit more temporary. It's still here today, obviously, but of course the sand, it's a little tricky to keep it up. The one over in the Annenberg Beach House on the concrete there is going to be available for people to come check out all month. And if you want to find out where your nearest labyrinth is to come walk a path, there are two websites. One is called the Worldwide Labyrinth Locator and another is wellfedspirit.org. So you can find one in your neighborhood. There are lots around Los Angeles. That's I awesome. feel so grateful you put a flag with our name in the matrix. We're so grateful. Thank you, you gotta so make much. Make sure you, you put one with your name right. on it too, yes. Chase. Yes, put your name on yes. it too. Yes, yes, of course. Yes, we love you. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, Chase. Lifting us up, Chase Beach, bringing us the sunshine.